Welcome to Plain Air Painting TV, the painting show that takes you out on location. Today we're down here in Barwon Heads on the Ballerine Peninsula. It's a beautiful day and I'm going to be painting the headlines behind me here. And I'm going to be showing you around all the amazing places to see in Barwon Heads. So come and join us as we go and find a spot to paint. We're going to have a fantastic day. Part of the fun of being a plein air painter, of course, is being out here on location and dealing with all the elements, and the wind has picked up here quite a bit, so you can see that things are moving around a little bit. We're just going to have to work with the elements as we go, so let's see how things turn out. Um, we're going to be painting the headlands, uh, which is known as the bluff overlooking the Barwon River, and uh, we'll get the drawing right first, then we'll mass in our major shapes and get our values right and then we'll come in with the details a bit later on. What I'm painting on here today is a uh, piece of MDF board. Just got this from my brother-in-law's uh, got a timber factory and uh, cut it to shape and have put a coat of gesso on. And I've got that up on here on the, uh, the easel and we can uh, get started painting on that. So it should be a great day, come and join us. Well, to start off, we need to really get our drawing in, uh, make sure we get the details right there. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to uh, take a small little flat brush and just mixing up some uh, burnt sienna and using some of our thinner just to uh, turn it into almost an ink-like consistency um, for our drawing here. So let me just get some of that on there. Okay, and uh, just looking at our composition here, I think what we need to do is really bring in our horizon line around about one-third of the... Uh, one third there. From a compositional point of view it makes sense to have it divided up rather than having the horizon line right in the middle. Oh there's some fantastic waves breaking on the rocks over there so this is going to be an exciting painting. The sand line I think will minimise the amount of sand that we can see um, in the painting here today. In fact probably needs to be around about there. Let me just bring that across. The headlands of course is the most important part so we want to make sure we get the headlands um, mapped in. We don't have to have it exactly like a photo but we want to make sure we get some of the key features there. Right at the moment there's a, a tanker coming from behind the headlands so you've got to be careful not to confuse the headlands with the tanker. Uh, but we're going to start the headlands at around about here. So we've got all these rocks and things happening here and then they start to stand up and uh, it goes up at a fairly sharp angle up to about there and you're going to love the, uh, the way the sand is hitting on that golden orangey soil over there kind of why I love painting Australian landscapes As soon as you finish your drawing, the next major thing to really think about is the sky. Now, if you look at the sky, you know, we've got a fairly clear day here, although we've got some clouds. What you'll find is that the highest point is where the blue is probably the darkest. So you want to have the really dark, rich blue at the very top of the, uh, the painting here. And as you come down towards the horizon, you'll find it lightens right off. And so if you get that graduation right, that creates that 3D effect. Because we've got quite a bit of sky in this painting, I'm going to take a, a larger brush at a uh, one inch brush, kind of a bristly sort of brush. It'll help us map in the, the, the major shapes and uh, colours in the sky. And take some of this ultramarine blue here. I'm just going to add a little bit of titanium white initially. It needs to be a bit bluer than that. A bit bluer than that even. There we go, that's more like it. And I'm just going to place, uh, place it in the corner there. Now because I'm painting on this board and I haven't really sealed it properly, I've only put one coat of gesso on here, um, I'm going to have to you know, apply the paint fairly liberally. The important thing when you're painting plein air of course is you want to get some of these colours in quickly um, so they help it flow better. Normally I'd use a medium if I was in the studio, some linseed oil and thinner 
um, but because we're out here, I try and travel light, the amount of equipment that we're using. So I'm just going to use a thinner as a medium. Okay, and just mask that in. Now I think we're going probably too dark there. Just get a little bit more titanium white, and you don't have to mix on the palette, you can just mix it straight in there. See that? Just mix that straight in. Okay, so one of the great things about painting in this style of wet on wet is you can just mix directly onto the board there. Okay, I'm just trying to get the right value here. Okay, now I need to make sure I come down over the horizon line here with this colour. Okay, a little bit into the water as well. What that does is it helps create a, a unity of the colour through the painting. Um, so again, that's why I'm going over the headlands. I can still see the drawing there, so we're not going to lose the drawing completely. So since I started painting the sky, there's some more clouds that have sort of developed here. Um, you can see there's quite a few of these uh, white fluffy clouds blowing in. main sort of cloud shadows through here so I'm just going to pop that in it's a long sort of narrow cloud um, over here it's quite dark Got some of that mauve into it as well Well, things are progressing along pretty nicely here. We'll go to an ad break and uh, I'll see you right after the break. Well, you know, normally I wouldn't be this far away from the actual scene that we're painting. I'd be a lot closer down the beach there. But uh, this wind is coming directly from the south, um, playing havoc with, you know, the microphone and also our setup here, as you can see, I've got my hand constantly on the easel to make sure it doesn't all head off down the beach. Well, we're coming to that part of the painting now where we're going to really focus on it on the headlands. And uh, this is the part we have to really start to concentrate on some of the detail work. Just looking at the headlands there, there's some beautiful earth colours. And this is one of the reasons why I love painting Australian landscapes and seascapes. The earth colours are really rich and vibrant, especially with the sun now hitting the headlands. I love these earthy tones. Australian landscape, um, really one of the reasons why I really love painting outdoors, I guess. So just get that in. Because of the challenges I'm having just holding the easel still, you know, we're going to do, this is going to be very loose and impressionistic. Um, as opposed to overly detailed. I'm sure you can appreciate if you paint. I know that there's uh, all these challenges, you just have to work with them. And I'm really just uh, adventure and fun. We like adventure and fun. 
you're not having fun while you're painting, you may as well just not paint. So this is all part of it. Well, we're making pretty good progress here so far. Let's go and find out what Sue's up to. So behind me is the iconic Bowen Heads Bridge. And it started its journey in the early 1900s when the locals wanted to build a connection between Burren Heads and Ocean Grove Townships. It was finally built in 1927. It is actually 300 metres long and is the longest wooden bridge in Victoria. The bridge is also listed as a state cultural significance by Heritage Victoria. More recently, due to its age, the bridge has undergone its biggest transformation yet and was completely reconstructed last year and completed this September. To preserve its heritage status, the design of the original structure was replicated. Ten metres downstream from the main bridge, they've actually constructed a new pedestrian bridge and that um, helps preserve the safety of the pedestrians, the cyclists and the fishermen. Now, if you're Australian, you might recognise this original bridge as it featured heavily in the ABC TV series, Sea Change, where a high-flying lawyer actually moved down from the city to a coastal town. This really depicts Burren Heads now, as a lot of people have discovered its charm following the TV show and have moved here to enjoy the relaxed, balanced lifestyle it is famous for. Byron Heads has an even more recent claim to fame as being the town where Australian Cadell Evans, the 2011 Tour de France champion, lives two months of the year. He can often be seen training on the local roads with friends. There was talk that the Byron Heads Bridge would be named after him, although this hasn't been officially confirmed. We're up here now at the Bluff Lookout and it's an amazing view. This was actually what Rod was painting earlier. Very panoramic view behind us. You can see Byron Heads Bridge, Ocean Grove to the right of the bridge and Byron Heads to the left. You can also make out the Rip, which is a dangerous stretch of water between Port Lonsdale, Shortlands Bluff and Port Nepean. Due to the large tidal flows through the narrow, narrow channel from the bay to the ocean and a high rocky seabed, the rip has claimed many ships and lives. One of the most recent tragedies was in 1940, where Uragal, a steamship, hit a reef a mile off from Barren Heads in overcast weather. All the passengers and crew were rescued. However, a fire started on the ship three weeks later, so the ship couldn't be saved. At low tide, you can just make out the boilers. Beautiful scenes here in Bar and Heads. You've got 13th Beach as well as the golf course behind me. Fantastic, you've got to come down. Well, we're nearly at the end of our visit now to Bar and Heads. And before we see how Rod's getting on with his painting, I just want to introduce you to another local artist by the name of Jan Mitchell. This colourful soldier and parrot bollard sculpture was part of an artist and schools program. After this first sculpture, Jan developed the concept of the Baywalk bollards to represent aspects of life in Geelong and some famous locals. So if you're coming down to Byron Heads, do go down to Geelong to the waterfront as there are over a hundred other sculptures, each depicting their own story of aspects of Geelong. So from one artist to another, let's see how Rod's getting on with his painting. Thanks for that, Sue. Well, while Sue's been showing you around Barwon Heads, I've made some pretty good progress on the headlands here, so I uh, just need to put in a few more finishing touches, so let's get that done now. Try and mix up a yellow ochre and burnt sienna. And see if we can get that. That's better. Get that colour established through there. So that mainly, you know, when I'm back in the studio, I'll have that feel of all that through there. And gee, now that the light's changing, there's some really almost like a mustardy yellow colour happening through here. Sandy embankment over the other side there. 
sun's starting to hit that now, which is just beautiful. So pop that in, and a bit there. It's always important to step back from the pony. Um, just to see it from a, a bit of a distance rather than being right up close to it all the time as you tend to be. So if you step back you can see how it's all working in relation with the scene that you paint. Well, things are going pretty well here, so join us right after the break for more Plain Air Painting TV. Welcome back to Plain Air Painting TV. Well, we're making good progress. We're at that stage where we need to start thinking about the water and the sand and putting some details into that. And then we'll pretty much have a finished painting. So let's get busy and uh, get those water and sand elements into the painting now, which is in the lower section of the painting. Just looking out at the water there, there's lots of little subtle variations in colour. There's not a lot of blue there, but there's tinges of blue. And there's quite a bit of sort of yellow and green in there as well. So uh, I'm just going to go back to that horizon line, pick up some more of that ultramarine blue, just a touch of the yellow ochre, so I can get a darker colour there. Maybe just a touch of uh, titanium white just to knock it back a bit, and that's probably too much. Okay, and I'll just... Uh, the danger, of course, of doing this in the wind here is that I'll uh, muck it all up, but not to worry. Get that blue in there. And then as it comes underneath the rocks here, it almost goes, in fact it does, it's, a, it's almost a yellowy green. So it's you know, just picking up more of that yellow ochre. Popping that through there. There it is. That's the colour I'm looking for. Just going to play around sometimes and get that right combination there. Yeah, I think that's looking good. Now, there is a nice big patch of blue there, which I think is the deeper part, the channel there, um, where the boats would head out. So I'll pop. Make sure we get that in as well. In through there, and in through here. So I'm just going to use some yellow ochre, which is featuring quite heavily in our painting here today. And you can see there's a little bit of that uh, burnt sienna from the original drawing from when we started the painting coming through. I actually like that, you know, it adds a bit of textural sort of variety, the tonal variety in the painting. So I don't worry too much about those things. You've got to be careful you don't hit this green and drag too much of that into the sand, obviously. We want our sand to have the right value of the sand. So I'm just uh, using a the knife there just to pop in those white caps there. Now there's all sorts of different ways you could do this of course. You don't have to use a knife. I just uh, thought for a bit of variety just to show you different techniques that it would be uh, worth just showing you this. So I've got these waves that are sort of crashing in here at the moment. And over on the other side here as well, getting a few little white caps and things in here. Now these are just little finishing touches which um, can make all the difference in a painting. Just, we'll just sort of exaggerate a bit of a wave there. Well. Now we're going to do the beacons, and uh, we've got a red beacon and a green beacon out there, which is fantastic. It will just set this off really nicely. So let's just grab some of this green on the uh, palette knife here. It's a good idea just to spread it out, 
and then just use a palette knife just to cut off a roll and then uh, carefully picking our spot I think it probably needs to go around about here okay and we'll put the base in in a second we'll just go with that alizarin crimson and we'll pop that in about here It's actually a bit of a sideways one there. A bit more paint. now in the uh, channel there, which is pretty exciting stuff. I'll just There, there's like all sorts of little details like um, the staircase, there's people walking around there. So the last few minutes just to finish this painting off, I'm just going to focus on those. I'm just going to go and add those in, not with any sort of high degree of accuracy, but really just uh, trying to get a, a, an impression of what's there. And there's a little bit of a staircase thing here. I think we've come to that point now we're pretty much uh, got the painting about as finished as we'll get it in these conditions here. I'm pretty happy the way it's gone considering the wind and everything uh, as you've seen. So the last thing for us to do here is to really sign off on the painting. I'll take it back into the studio and maybe work up a larger painting from it later on. I'm going to use some cadmium red because I like my signature to stand out. So let me get some of that there and always concentrate of course on your signature. Well, that brings us to the end of our painting here today on Plain Air Painting TV. Hope you've enjoyed it. I feel as though we've captured a, a pretty good impression and a feel of the place here today. So we'll see you next time on Plain Air Painting TV. Until then, happy painting.